What's up, you guys? What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Natalie, it is Hotshot Adventures. Welcome back. Thank you guys for continuing to watch my journey, watch me grow. Uh, man, it, you know, I thought 2020 was the hard year and then I got through 2021 and that was even more trying. That was even more difficult to get through. And, you know, just everything, everything, everything has happened and continues to happen, fortunately and unfortunately. Um, I keep trying to remind myself that what doesn't kill me makes me stronger <laughs> and that I need to keep smiling and keep pushing forward regardless of what is happening uh, in, in my life. So that's, you know, the moral of the story for today. Uh, perseverance. Perseverance is the moral of the story today. A uh, couple little side notes. Number one, I'm probably going to do something really drastic to my hair, you guys, so don't be surprised. Number two, uh, it is February 9th. It is Wednesday, February 9th. Ruben and I have been off uh, pretty much what? Well, since Friday, since Friday. So, uh, Friday to Wednesday, he's pretty much just been, uh, training, working on his maneuvers to get, uh, to, to go take his CDL test, uh, which hopefully will be this month. Uh, number three, I have the rest of the video from my last um, run, which was just a quick out and back to Phoenix. That was from last week. I will edit that and uh, put that up for you guys probably this Friday. It's just going to be short. It was just me. Um, so I got some recording done, but not like, you know, as much as I normally would have um, if I would have had some extra hands to help me out. So um, it is what it is, but I will post that up for you guys. And now let's get into Ford, okay? I have gotten so many comments from you guys. Um, I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate them. You know, uh, at the end of the day, really, I thought I was gonna have a lot more longevity in these one ton trucks. Uh, before I started to see major repair bills like the transmission that had to be replaced on my 2020 F350 back in December of last year, just before Christmas. Um, I really thought I was going to have, you know, 250,000, 300,000 miles before I was going to have to start looking at major repairs. And it was very disappointing. It was very disappointing for me uh, to see at 152,000 miles, I had to get the transmission uh, replaced on my 2020 F350. So um, I did create a playlist. If you guys want to follow along on all those little videos that I've been doing as, um, as this situation has happened, um, I did create a playlist. It'll be up here for you guys. Uh, now, Finally, I have received word just yesterday. I put out a little blurp video like, oh, they finally got back to me. Well, it took another week after that for them to um, actually get back to me. So what Ford has, um, what Ford asked me to do was send them any receipts that I had uh, for expenses that I had incurred while the truck was down. I sent them about $1,000 worth of hotel receipts uh, for both Joe and myself. And I sent them the tow truck receipt, which was about $300. And I said, look, there's a plethora of other expenses that are not included in this, but these are the actual receipts that I had. Uh, at the end of the day, they did not reimburse me for any of the hotel costs or, you know, any of that. And I was out a lot more money. Obviously, when you have a major breakdown, whether it's in, you know, a 250, a 350, a big rig, you know, whatever kind of equipment, when you run, when you run transportation, when you are paid by the mile, any type of major breakdown is uh, very costly. It's costly, not just in the breakdown, but it's costly in missed, uh, generated revenue, right? For the time that you have to be down, that costs money. It costs money if you are away from home. If it's unfortunately, like like in my situation, Joe was in Missouri and uh, he does not live in Missouri, neither do I. Um, I was in California. So um, it costs, you know, hotel. It costs, you know, food on the road. It costs storage for the trailer. It costs, you know, uh, the tow truck to get it towed. It costs a lot more money other than just the $8,000, which is what it cost me for the transmission, to put a new transmission in the 2020 F350. And at the end of the day, Ford did not, you know, they didn't, they didn't help with any of the additional costs. At the end of the day, they literally split the invoice in half and said it would be a, a one-time courtesy, you know, payment from Ford that uh, they're going to reimburse me just a little over $4,000, $4,063 or whatever it is. Now, 
I'm very grateful for that. Um, it's very unfortunate that my new truck um, had to have that. I, 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 you know, according to what Ford says the truck can do and according to what the transmission, you know, Ford says the specs on the transmission can do, according to all of that stuff, uh, still, you know, they, they don't last. Apparently they don't last as long as Ford says that they should. So you guys be mindful of that. Um, and it's not just Ford. You know, I, I have my guys out there, those of you guys who are like diehard, you know, Chevy fans or diehard GMC, diehard Ram, you know, are like, oh yeah, Ford found on the road dead. All of them will break down, you guys. They're all gonna break down. Yes, we are putting additional stress on these trucks, but that doesn't mean, you know, that they shouldn't, they shouldn't function according to what Ford says that they can do and that they should do. So um, very unfortunate for me that, you know, I had to go through this experience and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, on the flip side to this coin, right, uh, before I bought this 2020 F-350, before I bought this one, you guys, shut up! I don't know what is going on with my chickens, you guys. They're, I'm out here talking and they want to talk too, so I don't know. But uh, anyways, it's, it was a bit of a surprise for me, you know, knowing how I treated the truck, knowing how I drove the truck, knowing how Joe was, was taught to drive the truck and how he, you know, took care of the truck. It was just really unfortunate that this situation happened and it'll happen to any type of truck, okay? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen to the big rig. It's gonna happen to the, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to hot shot in a 250, um, it's, it's gonna happen, you know, diesel, gas, it's gonna happen regardless. When you run a transportation company or you run loads like we run loads, you're gonna have breakdowns, it's gonna happen. So let me just, you know, don't be surprised when it happens, right? I wasn't surprised that it happened. I just thought I was gonna have some more life, you know, in the truck before I had to deal with that type of stuff. So, um, but I was certainly not surprised. It, it's gonna happen. So let me be the first to tell you guys, it will happen to you. If you are starting a transportation company, your truck, regardless of the type of truck that you buy, regardless of you know the type of trailer that you buy, you will have breakdowns. Some of them will be small and some of them will be big. And that is why I'm always telling you guys to set money aside so that when stuff does break down, you can take care of the situation, you can react without emotion you know when when we don't have the money to take care of something everything is very emotional right it's like oh my god oh my god what am i gonna do running around you know like chicken little the sky is falling the sky is falling but when you have set money aside and when you when you are prepared for the situation when the situation arises it's not as stressful and it is something that you can take care of promptly to get back on the road as quickly as you can so that you can start generating revenue again. Obviously with no power unit, no money, no money. So you can definitely do always power only if you have a truck and no trailer, but you can't run any loads if you have a trailer and no truck. It, it, took, uh, it took a long time. It's been since December, uh, since the beginning of December that this situation happened. Within a week, the dealership got the truck up and running and uh, I had paid the eight grand and you know Joe was, was back up and running loads again. So we were already starting to recuperate that money. Um, Ford denied me, uh, Ford denied me and then they reopened my case and then they said, okay, yeah, we'll pay for half. And of course, I, I, I still don't have a check. You know, <laughs> I don't have a check. God knows how long it's going to be in order for me to get a check. But um, it's coming. You know, it's, it's coming. Um, and actually, it's something that Ford corporate is not sending. They have given a code to the dealership, and the dealership is going to cut me a check for reimbursement. So I'm hoping that it'll be faster. Um, you know, on, on, on a different note, this is big business. You know, this is, that's that perseverance. Had I let it go the first time when they denied me, I told them, I, I sent them an email right back. I said, I'm not letting this go. This is unacceptable. And, you know, I went through all of my spill. Um, so that's the perseverance part. If you don't think something is right, then speak up for yourself. When you have your own small business, nobody is gonna speak up for you. If you're still getting denied and you still feel like you have uh, a leg to stand on, then go ahead and get, you know, get some legal help. Get some legal help to, uh, to, get things, to get things rolling. 
Ford is a multi-billion dollar company and they threw me a $4,000 bone. Like, come on, you know, these people, and that's, oh, I don't want to get too much into it, you guys, because I don't want to give you too much of my personal feeling about this situation, but that's big business. Me as a small business owner, I would never, I would never treat a customer the way that I was treated from Ford corporate. Never. That, that's just not going to happen, you know? Um, and for me to have to fight, you know, all of these months, you know, they kept my money. They, you know, I paid for my truck. And then, and then just now, what, three, almost three months later, I'm, I'm, I'm got approval to get a check in the mail. So again, who knows how long that's going to take, but that's big business. And unfortunately, you know, us little businesses got to deal with the big boys too. And um, sometimes, you know, that's, uh, that can be a very frustrating situation. For me, it was a very frustrating situation. And um, I'm just glad that it's over. You know, I can move on. I can deposit the check whenever it comes and I can move on and, you know, get on with it. So that's the good news. Uh, hopefully, you know, that is the good news. I will share this with you guys. I am being very honest with you guys when I say I truly believe the only reason that I got half of the invoice reimbursed was because of this YouTube channel. I I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Um, I would have fought it regardless, you know, regardless if I had you guys out there watching me or not, I would have fought it because I think it's wrong. Um, I think it's wrong. I don't think a transmission should have gone out at 152,000 miles, period period, any kind of car, any kind of conditions, any kind of whatever. I, I don't think anybody should be making a product that is not going to last more than 152,000 miles. I just think that's crazy. Um, so I was going to fight it regardless, but to be honest with you, I think because of my outreach and because you guys are watching me, um, this, this is, that's the main reason why I, I am getting the reimbursement. And that's really, really, really unfortunate. Um, I will continue, you know, I have the 2022, uh, the gray wolf. I got the, I got the 2022 F350. I will continue to do, um, probably not reviews, um, because I don't want it to sound like I'm, you know, pushing forward down anybody's throat. Uh, but I will, again, I will tell you, you know, I will tell you guys on my little quick reviews of these trucks from now moving forward, you know, kind of what, what's gone on and what's not going on and, and how I've serviced these things just as an educational tool for you guys, um, but not necessarily to be pushing forward. Um, but remember, any truck is gonna break, okay? They're all gonna break. Uh, I was just talking to Steve, Steve, he has a 2020 Ram 3500. He has a four car hauler. He's doing great in his business. I've kind of helped him along the way. I was just talking to him two days ago. He had to put a new turbo in his Ram 3500. He's got 160,000 miles on his truck. I mean, like that is so unfortunate. And I was, you know, I was explaining to him my situation on the transmission and, you know, I, I talked to somebody else, uh, you know, now, now, two and a half years later, you guys, after I've started the business, you know, I really thought I was going to run so much more local than I had ended up running um, last year. Last year, I really spread my wings um, and I took a lot of uh, a lot of out of state work. Um, I was training some people. Right. So we needed miles. Um, now, that may have been a good thing, may have been a bad thing. I don't know. That was the choice that I made. But when it was just me and my one truck and my one trailer, um, I really thought I was going to be running so much more local than I ended up running. And that's why I ended up going with the type of equipment that I ended up going with. Um, now, you know, years later, you guys learn from me. If you guys are on the fence, if you guys are on the fence, oh, do I do hot shot? Oh, do I do big rig? They are two totally different beasts. And I've been telling you guys that, you, you know, you can't compare apples to oranges. You, you really can't. A big rig versus a one ton dually, they're going to do two totally different things. They are going to last two totally different lengths of time. They're going to cost two totally different, you know, you know, the financing, everything is different. Um, everything is different when you get, when you, when you are looking at those two types of equipment. Um, but I went with what I went with and now, you know, I have the trucks that I have and um, I'm going to continue to run the company as best as I can and generate as much revenue as I can um, with the type of equipment that I have. So, and, and you know, a side note, you guys, um, just last year, okay, so I purchased the white truck, right? The 2020 with the transmission failure. I purchased that truck in March of 2020. So next month, I will have had the truck two full years, okay? I'm doing all my tax prep, right? 
And uh, I will tell you guys that last year alone in 2021, that one truck grossed me $200,000 gross revenue. So does she need a little love from here, you know, from time to time? I mean, yeah, she's running her butt off. She's working hard. She generated me a good profit for just the one truck, just the one year. So yeah, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I was going to have to put a transmission in her. Maybe she is going to need some extra love. You know, I run through tires, I run through brakes, I run through, you know, maintenance and stuff like that. So, you know, keep that in mind, you guys. I mean, whatever type of equipment you're going to run, you're going to run, you're going to run, right? We get paid by the mile. I mean, really. So, or by the load, if, if you want to say that, but you know, you ain't getting, getting paid if you ain't running, running any loads. So, you know, the one truck, she did gross me, um, a decent amount of money for just one year. And, uh, you know, I look forward to moving forward, moving forward from here. And, um, hopefully god willing i can get a decent 2022 please <laughs> um because man you know the hits have just kept coming keep coming keep coming and you know i'm struggling with with some other stuff you know personally and <sighs> what can i do i just got to keep moving forward you guys stay blessed stay well stay healthy and take care of yourselves i'll see you soon